The RDO's Defense Materials and Stores Research and Development has announced that it has successfully developed liquid ramjet fuel for advanced air breathing engine, and the fuel was tested successfully at ramjet test bed yesterday. IHS James has reported that Malaysia and Indonesia are looking to procure air launched variants of the BrahMos supersonic cruise missiles from India to arm their Su 30 fighter jets. The commander of the Egyptian Air Force visited BrahMos Pavilion at Defence Services Asia exhibition in Malaysia, and the commander was briefed about the advantages of the BrahMos missile. The RDO's Combat Vehicle Research and Development Establishment is developing tank-launched loitering munitions for light tanks, that will have a minimum depth of penetration of 600 mm in top attack mode. Indian Coast Guard and Jindal Steel and Power have signed a Memorandum of Understanding in New Delhi for the supply of indigenous marine-grade steel to enhance the indigenous content in shipbuilding. The Indian Army is aiming to stop all import of ammunition from the next financial year, as it has already found indigenous sources for close to 150 of the 175 types of ammunition, and the local industry is even poised to bag a chunk of the global market. The navies of India and Singapore are planning to hold the 31st edition of the Singapore-India Maritime Bilateral Exercise in the fourth quarter of this year. Kerala State Electronics Development Corporation Limited has bagged projects worth around 160 crore rupees for 11 underwater arrays for the Indian Navy, and an order for another 11 arrays is likely by the end of next month. Pictures of Chinese Navy's third aircraft carrier has emerged on social media, which had started its sea trials last week. India's Cadet Defence Systems has inked a contract for the delivery of over 50 canister aerial loitering munition systems to the Indian Armed Forces by end of 2024, and will manufacture 5,000 units in the next two years. As per tender documents, the Aeronautical Development Agency is planning to start testing many of the key systems of the Tejas Mark II program on the Ironbird facility, including the Digital Flight Control Computer, Auxiliary Computer, Mission Management and Display Computer. The Ironbird acts as a flight simulator specifically designed for testing the integrated flight control system, that mimics the actual aircraft by incorporating hardware components like cockpits, projection systems and a network of line replaceable units configured similarly to the real aircraft. Officials have said, that the Tejas Mark II will have the ability to carry a staggering 8 beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles simultaneously, which makes the Mark II a true game-changer for air superiority missions, as it surpasses all other single-engine fighters in its class. Even the upgraded Mirage 2000 carries only 6 micro-missiles, and this advantage translates to a significant increase in offensive potential during aerial engagements. The images of the recent test of smart missile hints at an improved airframe design for great air efficiency. Additionally, the NOTAM warning issued for the test specified a designated area of 985 km, which strongly suggests that the new variant of smart boasts a significantly extended range of 900 km. After Edge Group's proposal to integrate Altaric smart weapons on the Tejas Mark 1A with a technology transfer option, Edge Group has now offered its Desert Sting 25 guided glide weapon for India's upcoming Archer NG drone. It is a lightweight air-launched precision guided weapon that weighs only 47 kg, features a 25 kg warhead, and has a range of over 22 km. Edge Group has also proposed its Reach M medium altitude long endurance unmanned combat aerial vehicle to India. Today's top 3 comments. <laughs>